G'day everyone, Jason here. We're making pretty good progress with the new song, having recorded some piano chords, drum track, and guitar for the verses and the chorus. There are three main other instruments I want to add to this song, and they are keyboard layers, some bass guitar, and of course, the vocals. I'm going to look at doing the keyboards next because often introducing new synthesizer sounds can change the mood of the song. So it's better that I focus on writing that before I turn my attention to adding the bass guitar and the lyrics. A lot of the time I like to use multiple keyboard layers throughout the song using different synthesizer sounds at different parts to create the necessary lift and character and depth and warmth or whatever I'm looking for at those parts of the song. Of course I can add as many layers as I want, but I have to be careful that I don't add too many, otherwise the sound gets too muddy and nothing is going to cut through that final mix. My general approach when I'm selecting synthesizer sounds is to try to occupy a wide range of frequencies from low end to high end and also with a good amount of stereo separation in those sounds too. But it's very important not to overdo it, otherwise I'm just going to end up with this big wall of sound. So it's very important that I also leave some space in that frequency spectrum so that it's not overwhelming. So, with all that in mind, let's get into it. From the previous videos, you can see I have the drums laid out in these green tracks here. And I've grouped them so I can collapse them down and give me some more workspace on the screen. And then later, of course, I'm going to go back to them to add effects and to make changes. But for now, I'll just put them out of the way so I can focus on the rest of the song. The guitar tracks are here in this lavender color. And the top line is the verse and the chorus. And the second line that I have here is the pre-chorus. The reason I broke them out is that I want to apply different effects to the guitar that I recorded for those sections. And that's easier to do when they're on different tracks, but we'll get into that in another video. And then I have the piano part, the main chord structure of the song, which is in this cyan color. Below the piano track, I've created a group called keyboards. And this is where I'm going to put all of the keyboard layers that I end up using the song. I went through my library of synth sounds and found this one called Uplift String Arpeggiator here in yellow. Now arpeggiators are great because just by playing one note, the synthesizer bounces around onto other notes within a key signature. So let's listen to how it sounds if I just play one note on the keyboard. So this is a middle C. Actually, it's a higher C. There's your middle C. So that's terrific. Just by playing one note, I can get a whole range of um, other notes played within that key and also some rhythm with it. The next thing I tried doing is a little bit like cheating. I took the piano track, Pan A, and I just dropped that straight in to this Uplift Strings Arpeggiator. So let's listen to that Pan A on the piano and then we'll listen to it on the uplift strings arpeggiator sound. So here's the grand piano. That's very familiar. Okay, enough of that. Let's go now to the uplift strings and listen to how that sounds. That's very interesting. Same chords. I'm using a piano but creates a very different sound so let's listen to the two of them together and you'll hear how interesting it gets skip ahead here we go and I like that because it creates a lot of rhythm and also this kind of pad swelling sound in the background. I'm going to adjust the levels a bit because it's probably a bit too much, but I like uh, where that's going. So what I did was I selected certain patterns that I had in the piano track and I dropped them down into the uplift strings arpeggiator at certain points in the song, not all the way through, but you know, when I go back and listen to it later on, maybe I'll remove some um, and play with the levels a little bit. 
So let's listen to it together with the drums, guitar and the piano, starting from verse 1. One thing I noticed when I was listening to the song in full is that the transition from the pre-chorus to the chorus is a little bland. It needs some form of a lift, a crescendo. So I could try doing that with some volume or percussion or effects, but another way to do it is to find a synthesizer sound that provides a similar sort of rise. And again, as I was going through my library, I found this sound called Psychokinetica. I'll play a few notes on the keyboard so you can hear what that sounds like just by itself. So here's what Psychonetica sounds like just playing one note on the keyboard. Okay, so that will provide some crescendo. What I'm going to do is use that in conjunction with a volume fade in and then that might work. So here is the pattern I created, just using the root note C, playing two octaves of C, and then I added some volume automation to fade it in. Let's hear that by itself. So now let's hear the whole track without it and then with it. So here's what it sounds like playing the full song without Psychonetica. Okay, and then when we add it, it sounds like this. Hear that rise in there? That provides some lift and crescendo. I might need to do more than that later with some percussion once I get the vocals recorded, but this will do for now as a transition between the pre-chorus and the chorus. I took a step back and listened to the full song now that I have two layers of keyboards added and it feels like it needs some sounds in the higher frequencies that can add some breadth to it. So I looked again through my library and I found this cool sound called Rye Ultra Tremble, another arpeggiated sound. So let's listen to that by itself and compare that to the other sounds that I had and you can hear the difference. So this is the Rye Ultra Tremble. It's quite percussive, and then if you compare that to the uplift strings that I had earlier, it sounds like this. So there's quite a difference there between the two. But I used the same technique, and I went and took the same piano chords that I used, and I dropped them into the Rye Ultra Tremble track so that I could basically use the same chords. What I decided to do for now at least is to use this new Rye Ultra Tremble sound in the places that I'm not using the uplift strings. So it sounds more percussive in the verses and chorus where I can make that difference. So let's listen to the pre-chorus leading into the chorus where I have the uplift strings in the pre-chorus and I have the Rye Ultra Tremble in the chorus. This is the uplift strings playing on the yellow track. Psychokinetica comes in. The rise and then over to Rye Ultra Tremble. Something more progressive for the chorus. And then bringing back the uplift strings to warm it up before I get into the chorus, which is just the uplift strings. I'm quite happy with that for now. I can always go back and make some changes later on. It might feel like I'm cheating a little bit by taking these patterns from one track and dropping them into the other tracks using different sounds, but it is an interesting way to bring new texture and staying within the same key signature. As I start working with the song more, I might find that I want to strip out some of the notes in the chords that I'm using on these other tracks to not make the sound so full, because sometimes 
less is more. Finally, I want to complement the end of the chorus where the guitar riff changes. Let's just listen to that. So I figured out the notes that I was playing on the guitar and I created a new MIDI track with these notes. And here it is, here. And then I selected a keyboard sound with kind of like a Rhodes piano called R&B Keys. It's very chime-like and almost mimics the guitar sound. Let's listen to that. If I play that along with the guitar, it sounds like this. I'm sure you can hear the difference. Let's go with that for now. I'll need to work on the levels in the final mix, but this will do for now. So that's four layers of keyboards on top of the piano, the guitar, and the drums. One final thing here is that, as you can see, I've left some space. I've actually removed some of the notes in the chords on the grand piano the uplift strings, and I have no ultra tremble playing at this point as I transition from the second part of the chorus into the verse. And the reason I did that is I wanted to allow the drums and the guitar to be playing by themselves and carry us back to the verse. So let's listen to that when I remove those synthesizer layers. <laughs> I just had the R&B keys playing along with the guitar, stripped out the other keyboards, and I think that just provides a nice transition. So that's it for now. In my next video, I will work on creating a bass guitar track for the song. Catch you next time.